Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess with me, the Doctor. Still did the same intonation every episode. In the last episode, we gathered some golden bugs and a heart piece, and we came here to the Twilight version of Kakariko Village, nearly called it Twilight Town. That's in Paper Mario. Um, and this episode, we're going to be gathering the Tears of Light, which are, as ever, in the form of shadow insects. At the end of the last episode, we opened the way down to Renardo's basement. So let's head down there. And indeed, there are three, as you can see from the map, insects here. Um, there's one, there's two, there's three, and let's get them all in one. Ha! That's, like, sometimes the insects can be a bit annoying because they're kind of electrified, so when you hit them, you take damage sometimes instead of actually killing them. As with almost everything in the Twilight Realm. There we go, I didn't say the Twilight Zone for the first time ever. Um, they can be killed in one, pretty much, with the Dark Aura. Anyway, how about that? Looks like you can climb the scaffolding. Go and do it then. There we go. And out we go. And here we are, sinisterly enough, in Kakariko Graveyard. There's some shadow keys around, but also if we bring our sensors up, there's an insect! And it's one of these annoying ones that burrows into the ground, we're gonna follow it around. And I'm not very good at digging accurately, apparently. There we go, we got it now. It's gonna try and run, but we'll just use, as ever, Dark Aura. Always works well. I'm not going to bother with a timer on the Tears of Light in this one because I will freely admit the Tears of Light are a lot slower on this one, but that's partly because it's a much bigger and less linear area as you'll see. Farm Woods was basically you just go from A to B and pick up all the Tears of Light as you go along. This one will probably take the majority of this episode, as I've set this episode aside for it specifically, but it shouldn't, it definitely will not take more than an episode. Um, so we're going to head here first to this house in the kind of like lower right, we're basically going to work through the house in order. This one we can crawl into from the corner. And when we hop up, you can see in the corner of this house, it's actually a general store, I think, um, there is, marked on the map, is a bug. Um, as for where it is, it's there. I was, I was looking for us. Wow, I had a bit of a bit of an incident there. I was kind of looking for us. I was like, why can't I see it? You need your goddamn sensors up to see him, can't you? I've only played this game blinking double figures of time. I probably actually have played the most double figures. It's not my favourite Zelda, but I do really like it. Um, it's just, I always had a bit of a con conflict about this. I, I want to get out. Um, I always had a bit of a conflict about this game because I really liked it, but my brother absolutely hated it. He thought it was basically just slow and boring and just too serious. And it's a lot, it's a common complaint with this game. And I kind of say it, basically it, it does, as compared to things like The Wind Waker or Skyward Sword, which kind of immediately surrounded it, it does take itself very seriously. And a lot of people argue that it looks like shit. Um, oh, there's a shadow trumpet first. And not anymore. Um, it does, yeah, it looks weird because it tried to, like... Realism, kind of going for realistic graphics only works if you can do it well, otherwise you just kind of fall into what we in the business refer to as the uncanny valley, which is things that look weirdly enough like humans to creep you out, but not enough like humans that you actually think it looks kind of right, and it's kind of like, just ends up looking creepy, and this game really fell straight into that particular valley. And unfortunately, as I mentioned at the beginning of the last episode, the HD remake, not that psyched for because it's just, it's just a HD texture pack. Um, now you can, you can do that on Dolphin, the emulator, and it just doesn't, it, like, it looks alright, but it's just like, it's, it's, it's not like they've remade the game or anything like that, it's just a retexturing, basically. Um, I'm sure that adds some good content, but it's not enough to make me want to buy a game I already own on two consoles on a third. Anyway, there's a shadow insect up there, so because he's sitting in the fire, let's smoke him out. That was effective. And, oh, no, I tried to kill him and I was still holding onto the flaming twig. There we go. I believe as well, there's actually another one in this building. How many are we on? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's another one in here, I think. So if we come along through here. Don't know why these shadow bulblins get a specific little zoom in. Oh, look at us intro, but they do. Oh, I tried to kill them both with the dark aura and it didn't work. And I gotta wait for this guy to get up again. And then, nope. <clears throat> They have to be, like, fully stud up. If they're not, then you just, like, all your attacks will miss them and it's just infuriating. Here we go. Here's another Shadow Insect. Um, now. Oh, I did a thing on this stupid bubbling again. Let's wait for these up. Oh, I believe. There we go. Shadow Insect was behind that cabinet. And now he's fled into the other room, so maybe he wasn't behind that cabinet. Well, he's, well, he's dead anyway. <laughs> I nearly, nearly said that a bit too soon. Let's grab that. And now we'll head back outside through the way we came. Cut to black. 
So now we're going to cross over to the other side of the street. As you can see, there's a building on this kind of row of buildings that has more shadow insects inside it. There are very few shadow insects in the overworld of Kakariko Village. Most of them are inside houses. And like, if you see them inside a slightly lighter green point on the map, it means they're in a house. As for this particular house... Ugh, I'm an idiot. As for this particular house, we can't enter through this little grate thing that it looks like we should be able to, but... Fortunately for us, the roof is fragile! And you can hear the sound of a shadow insect straight away. And it's under a box. So if you just push the box out the way... There's the little bastard. And let's grab the tear. You're starting to see how this goes now. And head back outside. And so now we can then just continue along through the buildings. There's one more... Actually, no, there's technically two more buildings to go, but the next one's a bit... This is the last normal building. The one after this is a bit of a more interesting one. Uh, we can smash through that window, which kind of flickers weirdly like it's in an old film, if you see what I mean. Um, and now we're actually into... This is technically the bomb shop. And if we bring our sensors up, we'll see this shadow insect is, in fact, behind a cabinet. So we can dislodge it that way and then kill it. We are rattling through these relatively quickly, because like, it's been, like, six minutes, but... We've got just over half of them, but they're just like, they're basically the final three in this place take ages to get to. Uh, you will see why very shortly. And also we're going to do something else in, the, in between the kind of two chunks anyway. So now we kind of come out the top entrance of the bomb shop and we're up to this kind of like higher area. And there is an insect and it's getting away from us and entering that house. So let's follow it. So... The insect's in here, and it's gone into the fireplace, and we've done this already, so we'll take a stick from the fireplace, and there's a fire in the corner here. Set the stick on fire, and light the fire to smoke it out once again. Huh? What did you do? Sorry, but as romantic as this, I'm not gonna stay here with you to die, I'm getting out. She did not say to die, I just added that in, how morbid. Anyway, the house is on fire, oh my god! Yeah, everything's going mental, get out now, 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 now. I don't suppose there's any nicer way to hunt these things, huh? Well, he had to sacrifice someone's house to find the Tears of Light, but that's how the cookie, cook, cookie crumbles, right? Yeah, that's, that's efficient. If nothing else, that we got three Tears of Light there for yeah, blowing up a house. And now there's only one more location in Kakariko Village. And if you are looking at the Vessel of Light on the kind of middle right of the screen, you will notice it's unlikely that this final location indeed has the four Tears of Light we're missing, and it doesn't. So that tells you that... There's more than just Kakariko Village going on here. Ah, we're being attacked, but I'm just going to tunnel into the house and ignore that trumpet bird. So once again, you can hear a shadow insect, and it is here in a jug. Let's just kill it straight away. Oh no, we didn't kill it straight away. Actually, it, it attacked us and actually did a surprisingly large amount of damage to us. Thanks for that, Blue Rupee. Every time you fire up the game, it reminds you what a blue, red, and yellow rupee is. Ugh, it never gets... never learns, does it? Ugh. So where to go now? Looking at the map, you will see that it's completely empty. Um, so let's try heading over this way. There's two boblins and there's another gate, so let's kill the boblins. And there's no way to dig through the gates. So that's clearly not meant for us. If we bring up the map, you'll see there are three more. Up there. Specifically, where is that, you ask? Death Mountain. Yes. That's why this takes a while, because it's been, what, seven, eight, ten minutes to get the first lot, uh, with a couple of cutscenes in between. Um, this will take the rest of the episode to get up Death Mountain, because that takes a long time, unsurprisingly. Looks like the path's impassable, but I can get you up if you want to go. Indeed you can! If we head over here, we can summon Midna, and one, two, up we go. Look at this! Oh God, I sounded exactly like Tricky from Star Fox Adventures here. Look at this! Anyway, this is a new species. This is a Goron. Oh, why do I have to stand guard? The ladder is destroyed, so it is not like any humans will come up. 
And what is with the elders? If we have a problem that humans can help with, we should ask. It is better than suffering for the sake of pride. Well, he can't see us anyways. Let's sneak past. Never mind your guard duty. All you're guarding against is spirits. So, you can see from the map once again, this is a large area. So, uh. ooh, lord. Ooh. That's why I shouldn't drink while doing episodes, but I do! Um, <laughs> because my commentary is better when I'm drinking. Uh, that's, that, god, that, that sounds really bad, I really should not. Drink responsibly, ladies and gentlemen. Um, anyway, if we come up here, you will hear a shadow insect. Uh, you should watch out for these... Watch out for these geezers, is what I was gonna say. Or geysers, if you're American. Um, that's a, that's a very contentious point, that, because... To an English person, saying geysers sounds ridiculous, but geezer also sounds in its own way ridiculous. It's like, oh, my cockney geezer, so... It's one of those phrases where I don't know which one I say, because uh, I honestly don't know which is my normal pronunciation, because both sound stupid to me. Anyway, this thing is fucking running rings around- Oh my god! Get fucked! Oh! He's proving annoying. Ugh! Is he going back under? I didn't even know they could ever do that. You piece of shit. Get the fuck up here. So get the fuck up here. I'm digging on you. There you go. Right. And get wrecked. Oh my god. So why are you not attacking him properly? <laughs> right, seriously, what's going on here? Something's gone spooky. I'm not okay with this. Oh my god. What did that take a minute to kill one thing? Because. I think we were on a slight slope, so whenever I did the dash attack, it wasn't actually dashing properly. Anyway, you'll have heard of me if you were listening very carefully, a strange sound in the background. Specifically... There's this stone. Cast your mind back to episode 5 and the hero Shade, who said, Listen for the stones that howl with the sound of the wind. And then cast your mind back to episode... 3! When we learned how to howl. So it's telling us to go up, middle, down, up, middle, down. So it went. You can listen to it as this as many times as you want to get the rhythm and where you change it. And once you're confident you've got it, hold A and then hold the directions. And it's as simple as that to see howl your first tune, see if you recognize it. So you turn up in the sweet howling arena and you have to howl what you just howled again. Except this time you've got blue marks which you made before, so you kind of know how to get it perfectly if you kind of... The songs get harder as you go along, but that one, fairly easily. Again, see if you can guess what it is. If you don't already know, that is. Let teachings of old pass to you. Take sword in hand and find me. So, back in the real world after that particularly trippy vision, Golden Wolf appears. Do you recognize where that is? It is all on spring, but as he said, take sword in hand and find me. So, if we turn up to him as a wolf, I think he just says, fuck off, mate, or some equally sassy equivalent. So we can learn a new hidden skill from him if we go to him when we are back in human form. But of course, we are notably not in back in human form because we are missing two tiers of light, and we can see exactly on the map where they are, and we should be able to get them cleaned up easily by the end of the episode because we... Mm, it's hot. You know, I'm going to call them fumaroles, because that's what they are actually called. They're not geysers anyway, because a geyser is actually when tectonic... Well, like, when boiling water sprays up as, like, boiling water spray, whereas that's gas. So actually, it's called a fumarole, I think. Yeah, Death Mountain, by the way, in case you hadn't noticed. And some shadow beasts. So let's head down the and kill these first, because we can unlock ourselves a warp point that way. You'll notice there's this little fucker who's off in his own little house in the corner. Kill him first. He's deliberately designed to fuck you over because it's so easy to kill the other three in one and then just forget about him. Let's see if we can get all three of these in one. Ah, oh, dicks. Actually, no, we've left two alive. That's fine. If you crash into the wall while you're doing that technique, you will just stop it instantly. And it can be slightly annoying if, like, there you miss one of them. But we still had two left, so they didn't all revive. So we've got a warp point. We can come back to death mount at any point. So that's great. And there's a shadow insect on the wall. There's a shadow insect in the air. And there's a shadow insect in the dead zone. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't think of a. I, 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 uh, I was gonna say in the afterlife. That should have. That would have been much better. I don't know why I didn't say that. I mean, it would have been much better. Still not good, but anyway. If we time this with the fumarole, once it stops, up we go. And there's another spirit here. 
And indeed, it's another Goron. Why do I have to stand guard at a dead end at the bottom of the cliff like this? Wait a second, have they tucked me out of the way because they think I am useless? Oh, poor Goron with self-esteem issues. Bless. Um, anyway, there is another bit up here where we can go up here. There's a shadow trumpet bird behind us. Let's kill him. Oh, dicks. Ugh, I'll get back up there. Well, let's try that again. I mean, I was successful in killing the Shadow Trumpet Birds, but I need to stop calling them that. They're actually called Shadow Kakaroks, or sometimes just Shadow Birds, but I will always call them Trumpet Birds. Ah! Now we hear a strange thing with Death Mountain, and it does occasionally erupt, and a lot of shit falls down. Anyway, there's one final gore on here. If you listen to them, we'll say... Ooh, another fumarole! And once again, it is in the worst possible place. I suppose the path is impassable now. Hint, hint, hint. This one doesn't stop. This one keeps going. So, we'll head off to the right, and down into this... Weird area. It's technically a hot spring, but it's not got any water in, so it doesn't actually. I mean, just. Oh my goodness! Ah, uh, the volcano's kind of erupting on us. Um, that's problematic. <laughs> right, where is. Aha! There's the shadow insect who's right next to us the whole time. And with that, that I believe is our final tier of light. The Vessel of Light is full of tears, and Light has returned to this area. Oh, I was just starting to have fun. Don't forget that few shadow. Once again, I will say this, the, the design on the light spirits is fantastic. This thing reminds me of that creepy owl dragon bloke from Avatar. Um, keep seriously disturbing me for some reason. Anyway, my name is Elvin. I am one of the light spirits of Hyrule. I am the spirit that guards these lands. O oh, great hero chosen by the gods. The dark power you seek lies on the sacred grounds of the proud mountain dwellers. But already those grounds have been defiled, draped in shadow, and seeded with evil. You must go to those sacred grounds and cleanse them. Man, he didn't give us much. The last bloke gave us a new suit of clothes. That one was very lackluster. <laughs> I mean, he turned us back to human, in fairness. Thanks for that, Elden. I owe you that much, I suppose. I've oh, I talk so much shit. I really need to stop. Doctor? Oh, I eat shit, Colin. <laughs> Oh, baby judges you as he walks past, nonchalantly. <laughs> pretending he wasn't acquiescent to a crime. Haha! <laughs> See, Beth? I told you Doctor would save us! No, you didn't. I agree with Shifty Baby's look there. Colin told everyone Doctor would save us. You are the one from Orden of whom these children spoke? We are well met. I am Renardo, shaman of this town. And this is... This is my daughter, Luda. Fuck you, Barnes. <laughs> oh, look at his beer guy hanging out. That's disturbing. The beast took us and left us to die, but Mr. Renato found us. At first, I couldn't believe they'd come from so distant a place as the Ordona province. Nearly ten minutes walk. It's not even ten minutes, it's more like two. Yeah, I... We don't remember much. All of a sudden, everyone was captured, and then, until now, it's been like... A nightmare. Yeah, it was like a terrible dream, and we couldn't wake up. Nightmares are everywhere these days, it seems. This village has certainly seen its share of hardships. 
The dark beast attacked, but even worse, there's the sudden inexplicable change in the mountain-dwelling Goron tribe. They had long been our friends, but suddenly treated us as foes. Even now, they refuse to permit us entry into their minds. It strains the limits of belief to think that such a gentle and proud tribe, hint hint, could change so suddenly. It makes me wonder if something in those minds is the cause of this change. I mean, the red text in this game is never subtle, even at the best of times. In any case, you must take the children and flee this village before the ni more nightmares descend. I, of course, cannot leave my village at such a time. There is no telling what may happen to us here. But it is my job to try and coax the Gorons back from their recent change of heart. I think we'll end it there. It's been almost exactly 20 minutes once again. Actually, it's been slightly more. So, yeah. We've returned light to the Elden Province, and specifically Kakariko Village. And so next episode, we're going to be trying to work out a way to head up to Death Mountain and see if we can convince the Gorons to stop being dicks. Thank you very much for watching. I've been the Doctor with the Infamous Gentleman, and this has been The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Thank you very much, and good day.